reserves of fossil fuels are like a giant bank account. The problem is, we'll soon be overdrawn and the funds cannot be replenished. Consider where our food comes from. The average item in the supermarket has traveled 2,500 kilometers to get there. For every one calorie of carrot flown into Britain from South Africa, 66 calories of fuel were used to get it there. The processing and baking of breakfast cereal takes four calories of energy for every calorie delivered to the bowl. Just manufacturing a box of breakfast cereal burns the equivalent of one liter of gasoline. In the beginning, we had nothing. It was people's energy that provided food, clothing, and shelter by hunting, fishing, and tilling the soil. Everything in your home came from somewhere. Every tube of toothpaste, every flat screen TV, every chair you sit on, every smartphone, everything. With today's globalization, items often travel around the whole world during the manufacturing process. Alternatives are decades away. Is ethanol a viable fuel for transportation? If you want a cup full and you just want to go around the block, no problem. The reality is there are no substitutes for oil as a transportation fuel on the scale required. Production of alternative fuels such as ethanol is impossible without oil. If you planted all of the United States in corn to make ethanol, you'd only have 10% of what is required for fuel every day. It is essential that oil and coal and tar be only used for air and road transport and for the farmer who grows your food. Realistically, alternatives are decades away, complex and difficult, not as easy as pumping oil out of the ground. There is a direct cause and effect relationship between energy consumption and items vital to our well-being, such as clean water and air and safe and abundant food. Abundant energy has freed us from the struggle for basic survival. Our civilization and culture have thrived. It's common sense, then. People living in poorer parts of the world must use more energy to break the bonds of poverty to be able to participate in the world of today. Energy consumption determines our well-being. It gives us freedom and control over our lives. The world needs more energy, not less. But how do we do this without ravaging our precious natural world? There is a source of energy with the capacity to replace fossil fuels and to deliver power when and where it is needed. It's sad to think that in the future, nature might only be seen in a place like this.